Okay, welcome to the 2019 Senior Night. We have six seniors who are going to be honored tonight. Our first one is going to be introduced by Antoinette Oka. I never told you this. 
Our next senior is Gabe Smith. Jayla is going to be introduced by sophomore Leilani Montero. Our final senior is senior captain Jay Wynn. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's Robin High School basketball game between the Rush Rock Ferry and today's Rock of Boston. The starting lineup for West Rock Ferry, number 11, Jasper Patee. Yeah! 
Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, this is Staff Gymnasium, home of your Brockton Boxers, and today it's a matchup that once again we have no idea what to expect. West Roxbury comes to town to face the Brockton Boxers. The other interesting aspect of this game is that it's a 4 o'clock in the afternoon tip-off on a Friday afternoon, not something we normally see. As always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Today, joined alongside by my broadcast partner, Alex Wish, Brockton High School alumnus, part of the greatest class of all time, 2011. Also, we were students at Brockton High during the Boxers' last trip to the TD Garden, which the Boxers are a far cry from the last couple of years, but you never know what could happen in the playoffs, and this is the last home game for the Boxers, the Lady Boxers, in the regular season. Yeah, I, I mean... I don't know too much about this team. Uh, so, from my understanding, they, they could be a wild card team. They could pull something. We'll see. Boxers did clinch the big three division. So they will be at least making an appearance in the south sectional MIAA playoffs. West Roxbury wearing, I don't know, what shade of green that is, but we'll call it it's a like, hunter. A, like a lime green, a hunter green. That's not a lime green, a hunter green. Hunter green, the boxers in their home whites, red trim around the black numbers. The Raiders with a very short pitch, in fact, only one sub on the West Roxbury roster. Jayla Smith down low, she is one of the seniors. All of the seniors starting today here on senior night for the Lady Boxers. Well, I mean, you have all their families there. Uh, you better start them. <laughs> you better not start a sophomore or, or a freshman when you got everybody's families waiting to see these girls play uh, some, hopefully some good quality basketball. There's a buzzer and a stoppage. We need stoppage. I don't know what that stop was for. Uh, it was a clock malfunction. The clock didn't start or something to that effect. Uh, 
My man Rodney over there. Walking away like, it's not my problem. Well, sometimes you gotta fix it, and sometimes you gotta call the big guns at Los Savas. Kevin Carroll, the athletic director, need to fix the scoreboard. It's Rodney. Yes, Kirsten, all doing a great job all season long at the scorer's table. And who could forget Jerry? Jerry Connor, the athletic trainer Jerry. at Brockton Connor at Brockton High School. Everybody loves Jerry. Oh yeah, she took care of me when I was hurt uh, back in my track and field days, cross country. That old that old uh, story. Icing, back icing my uh, quads and uh, all my muscles in my leg when I was injured or pulled something on the track. So she knows what she's doing as well. When it comes to sports related injuries. Of course, tomorrow night she's got an interesting one. She will be the trainer for Brockton High as the boxers hockey team goes against her son, who is the starting goaltender for Oliver Ames High School. And Oliver Ames it does play at the arena. And Oliver Ames is designated as the home team in that matchup. Tomorrow. And so she attends to both teams. Because both teams, that's their home ice. Yes. It's a lengthy stoppage. Well, no better time than the present. Trade deadline yesterday. 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And as we know, Anthony Davis... AD. Still a pelican. Yep. It's no surprise there. It was what I was telling you on Tuesday that uh, my man Rodney the Sharks He's me over there. got some moves. Um, just waiting for that buzzer, the score, keeper. But uh, anyways. So AD still a pelican. LeBron tried to trade three quarters of the players that put on a Lakers uniform, unsuccessful in that effort. Uh, you know, as soon as that trade deadline came in line, and AD wasn't a Laker at the end of it, it you, just, you just know that Lakers' chances of getting him are dead. They are dead. They had their shot to be one of the only contenders at the trade deadline to get him. But New Orleans played That's it smart. That's going to be a travel. New Orleans played it smart. In my book, they played it smart. They're like, they're going to walk out. Oh, yeah. They're not going to get rid of their, main, their star guy mid-season. They're not going to get a whole lot out of it. Wow. So nice shot two. there. Drained it and Lady Barks is out too early leave. This is uh, turning out better than the previous game where nobody scored for what? Five minutes? Yeah, that was an interesting one to watch. Yeah, against New Bedford. Look at that hit. Okay, five seniors on this team. Not suited, not suited up tonight. Jade Went, who is one of the starting captains, with. she's a big loss in the box of the lineup. Then we came up with Ken, who is in the paint, grabs that rebound. Number Twenty. Let's see, number Twenty-two is listed as Alex Williams, the freshman, but she is out tonight. Justin Street throws. The steal there. On a breakaway. Number five. Oh. Amiga McNary yeah. Austin. See, that's the same problem the Lady Boxers had last game. They had the breakaways. They had the chances. They had the easy layups. And they could not finish. And it's still the same story here. They did not finish. Here's another breakaway. Lorenzo hits uh, they the They finished that one good. Gotta finish those. You want to win a want to win a ball game? You gotta you gotta capitalize. 
Coro Brockton on top. West Roxbury did not bring a roster, so we'll be calling out just their numbers. Long three from the top of the key, top of the backboard, no good. Called down by number 22 for the Boxers. Now Depina down low, and she hits the layup. 6-0 Boxers. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Get in those lanes, get the early shots, get those chances, and you'll be golden. You'll take control of this basketball game if you keep doing that. Here's and another one. Oh. Jada Smith fair. grabs the rebound. She misses the put back layup. You get all these rebounds. You got to finish. Lorenzo is pretty. Way downtown wow. is good. Annalie Lorenzo from her favorite spot on the floor that halfway between the baseline and the top of the key. 9 0 boxers. And another steal. Lorenzo in alone. Annalie Lorenzo up and in. Wow, Lady Boxers right now. Just really have eyes on that ball. They have big eyes on that ball. And West Roxbury not doesn't look like they're giving it their A effort right now. There's another steal. Oh my god, wow. Seven points for Annalie Lorenzo so far, thirteen for the boxers. The it's turning out to be a real barn burner here. And another steal. Another this steal. one's Layla Defina in alone. And she hits the easy layup. 15-0 boxers to start the first quarter. When will West Roxbury score? West Roxbury looks like they really want to play this game. Another layup converted for the Boxers now on a 17-0 run to start the first quarter. I have not seen West Roxbury get in the paint yet this game. They're shooting all from outside the paint. And West Roxbury has the size advantage here. Here's DePita in alone. And she hits the easy layup. And, you know, and West Roxbury hasn't called the timeout to stop the bleeding. I, I, if I were a coach, yeah, I would, I would hold play right now. You might as well just get back on the buses. Well, yeah, you start out the first quarter in a 19-0 hole. Uh, it's pretty hard to come back from. Any level, any level, that's hard. You know, Smith. Over to Annalie Lorenzo, all seniors on the floor for Chris Connolly's Brockton Boxers. Smith, pump fakes for three, short two, and that's an air ball. West Roxbury comes down with the rebound. They stepped out of bounds, not called. Here's number 14 for the Raiders, and she loses it. Picked up by number 22 of the Boxers. Lorenzo can't grab it in bounds. And there's a look at that Annalie Lorenzo deep three. She was four feet beyond the three-point arc on that one. Yeah, that was when they started uh, really pulling it out. Another steal, breakaway, and finish. Wow. How at, many this, at this rate, I think we need to see it done. How many, how many steals is that? That's got to be at least eight or nine steals on in the first quarter alone. I believe that is eight buckets off of steals. There were 16 points, and there was a three pointer. And man, I tell you, and Brockton's calling a timeout, and they're going to put in all of their. Celtics would kill to have that many uh, steals and go down the court. Oh my god. Any NBA team or any, any team in general. So I, I bet you, I bet you Lady Boxers right now are feeling pretty good on the they're feeling pretty good about this game. They, they feel like they are in the driver's seat, which they are. They are in the driver's seat. They they came out. They they know how to play against this West Roxbury team. They they re, they read them very well. Start off, and I I think they're just continuing the trend that this team we are way better than we we can we can handle this team. No problem. 
And that's what, probably what they're, the gist of it is on the bench. This is a look at the Annalie Lorenzo still in the first of many. It's a very, very poor quality in West Roxbury. You know, you don't have eyes on the ball, you don't have eyes on the defenders. Wow. West Roxbury ends the uh, drought. I think that was a long two. Oh, it was a three. So you're saying there's a chance. Number 30, uh, 32. She put up a nice bucket for three. So they end the 21 0 uh, drought. 21 uh, point streak. Smith takes a three and hits it. 24 to three. The box is up by 21 points. I think that actually was a long two. That was a 32 from her uh, the spot where she shot it from to uh, end that drought. But she couldn't get that one. A lot of teams stacked at the top of the high school basketball rankings. There's another three for Brockton. Now 26 to 3 boxes on top. And you've got the handful of undefeated at the top Belmont Cathedral and Millis, all with goose eggs in the loss column. And then you talk South Shore, we've got Coyle Cassidy. Bridgewater Raynham at 16 and 1. Franklin. Get out to Metro West. Wellesley at 14 and 2. Natick at 13 and 2. Braintree 12 and 3. That's three more losses than they've had the last four years combined. What a run of success Braintree's been on the last half a dozen years. Four straight state titles. Well, you think they're gonna think they're gonna repeat? I think there's too much talent in the, the South Shore D1 bracket this year. Um, they've also got a new coach, which that's a crazy situation. Parents, pull it together. Do not go after your coach after a game. Do not follow her up to her vacation spot in upstate New Hampshire to verbally assault her for not playing your son or your daughter. Just get it together. Be cordial. If you have a complaint, follow the proper channels. Mm -hmm. And do not, under any circumstances, harass the coach about playing time for your daughter. Right. Which led the coach, who won four straight state titles, to quit. Who's the winner there? It's uh, it's def definitely not the place to uh, go after a coach. And it's high school. It, you should. I had I had a similar problem when I was in high school. Um, you know, I want my, I want my coach to put me in, uh, the races I wanted to be in, uh, when it came to winter track and spring track, and he put me in the ones that he thought that was, you know, best, or like, or like, there were times in track where I thought I was kind of mistreated, um. But my, I told my my father, and he didn't he didn't go straight to the coach and yell right in his face. He took the proper steps. He went to the AD at the time, um, which was I think Kennedy. Tom Kenny. Tom Kenny, and he took the proper steps 
Um, so, to not really, you know, go directly towards the coach, he went to the AD, and then the AD went to the coach and said, listen, we need to talk. And, and that's the proper steps. If you want to complain about playing time, about anything with your son or daughter when it comes to playing for high school, you should take it up with the people who are paying these coaches first. Because they have more say than you going to a coach and yell right in their face. Going up to a coach and yelling at them is not going to help you. And especially when it, you're following them, not even to a game, to their personal vacation. That, that's taking Which is a, a an hour bit. north of where you're That's a little bit sitting. too far. I would have called the coach. Oh, yeah. If I was the coach. Oh, yeah. You're not on school grounds anymore. You're not at a, a school game or school-wide function or anything that is so involved with Brock in high school. You you are outside the you are outside the state of Massachusetts, let alone outside of Brockton. So, to me that that's a yeah I I would call it cops because you know you're trespassing you're you're disturbing the peace. If you have a problem, wait until Monday and go to the AD. The AD will talk to the coach for you. And save a lot of embarrassment for your kid. So uh, to paint it for two, no good. It's 31 to 3. Brockton on top here on senior day. Pretty much got a, a football score here. Football blowout score. Well, West Roxbury has Brockton right where they want him. See the staff uh, gymnasium is quite down a bit. They, they already know who's uh, winning this game. Brockton knows their game plan. They they know how West Roxbury's playing. West we Roxbury. haven't had a foul called yet today. Yeah. A fundamentally sound. Number 32, number 32, uh, she likes that spot right at the top of the key, but uh, it's only worked for her once. Has she won a seven so far? There's our first foul. One of the Shouldn't very have first said anything out of the game. <laughs> We're going to have the lone Raiders bench player come in. She will replace number 13. <laughs> Brockton's going to start playing the clock game. Gila Smith out to Lorenzo. She thought about the three from her favorite spot on the floor. You got, this layup look, gets her own rebound. Three, That's a fresh 30 seconds. You have three defenders. That's a three-second violation. In the paint. Yeah. 17 mm -hmm. times over on number 32, who's just been standing in the middle of the paint. <laughs> There we go. Nothing says teach the fundamentals like not even warning her to get out of the paint. I mean, even number 14, I call a foul on number 14 as well. And she's been standing there for at least two solid minutes now. The peanut down low off the glass and in. But, I mean, this West Roxbury team, to me, just look at them uh, through the first quarter, now we're in the second quarter. On defense, they don't even try. They're just letting There's Brock, no the Lady Boxers, walk in to the paint and say, oh, oh, there goes a shot. Oh, oh, rebound. Oh, oh, they got it again. Oh, oh. You know, if I'm a coach, I'd, I'd be screaming. There's no defense. There's no offense. There's no... There, there's no anything. This is five players wearing green on the court that are... Just barely moving their legs. I mean, number 32 has a big body. Throw your arms up. She, when they just got that layup, she didn't even once throw her arms up or try to move into the direction 
of the shooter. You'd think after a while, if you shoot 23s and only one of them goes in, well, you I, would stop shooting threes. I think this West Roxbury team is afraid to enter the paint. They have not entered the paint once. I have not seen this team try to get, attempt to get into the paint, draw a foul, or try to get a shot. See, they, all their shots are taken outside that paint. Well, this goes to show what the parody of the Boston Public Schools is. You get the powerhouses. I mean, if we had a shot map right now of where the lady boxers shoot from, they're shooting from all areas of of their, you know, they're doing everything right, shooting-wise and offensive-wise. And on defense, we could say the same thing. They're going to come up with steals. They're making sure that nobody's coming into the paint area. Hey, there's a made three. I mean, sure, they let up the threes. The three is the Brooks Brux Roxbury's game. That's the only thing they have for them is like, we'll throw up a magic three. Hopefully, we pray that it goes in. That's their game. It's like, we'll just throw up a three. Hopefully, it goes in because we can't get the rebound. Uh, we can't steal the ball. Um, so that yeah, that's our look. Number thirty-two does it again. She doesn't try to go past the number fourteen. Or tries to bring it in herself. You know, the lady boxers are, they're taking, the seniors are taking the shots they want from their areas, which is fine. But they're also getting into the paint. They're also getting the easy layups. And West Broxbury is just letting them do it. It is 37 to 6. Brockton on top. There's another easy two. There's another easy two right there that you just saw. And if you look we analyzed, if I was like Tony Romo right now, and we, and on that replay, I would get my magic marker out, circle, look, this defender, this defender, and that defender aren't doing anything. Number 14 pretty easily knock the ball out of her hands right there. Could easily try to get that rebound. The buzzer sounds in the first half as they fully come to an end. The score 39 to 6. There's not much to break down. So we'll just step aside, take a short break, and bring you second half it's action right after this. Pretty much all Brockton is what you could say. Ouch Kibbimble! Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into Staff Gymnasium for second half action between the West Roxbury Raiders and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Matt Dog, Matt Nelson. Joined alongside my broadcast partner for tonight's festivities, uh, Swish Senior Night here at Staff Gymnasium for these Lady Boxers, and they're putting on quite the show. 39-6 to six your score. Heading into third quarter action, Jayla Smith, one of the seniors with the ball now. She's made a couple of big plays. But the game for the Brockton Boxers has been steal it or grab the rebound on the missed three, run it up the court, put it in. Yeah, basically. And uh, when they're on offense, it's, it's pretty much like they just know, like, oh, yeah, we can walk in the paint, no problem, and and we're gonna have they're gonna have poor defense, so we can we can figure out something. Well, a couple of fun facts for you: the Raiders of West Roxbury High School are 0 and 17 coming into this game. They have not put up more than 30 points in one game, and that one time they did was against Green Academy. 
where they lost 38 to 30. Looks like an average of about 18 points the rest of the time. Their last three matchups, they lost to Boston English on Wednesday, 40 to 18 against Madison Park, 31 to 11 on January 31st, and Charlestown, the newest Boston powerhouse, 56 to 16 on January 29th. And they also, when Brockton visited West Roxbury, the final score in that one was 76 to 20. Did I embarrass them that much? Well, so so let's have the debate. You put in your, your second string, third string, in some cases for the players in the floor, your fourth string. You can't tell them not to score when they don't play the rest of the season. Right. Nor can you leave the starters in and say not score when the players that never see the floor are sitting on the bench in a blow like this. So the, the players that haven't seen the, the floor, number 22, which is normally worn by Alex Williams, uh, number five for the boxers who... Well, this is why when uh, scouts come to pl watch you for college, um, they're not coming to a game like this. They're obviously coming to a game where it. They know it's going to be high scoring. They know it's going to be a close game. They don't come to, you know, that. this is why um, this is like a senior. It's a, to, a toast to the seniors, their last game here on home, home court. And they're up against a team that, you know, is not developed well or you know, a school that's not really focused that much on basketball. Um, so, you know, it's a good night to pay your a tribute to your seniors and let them let them have some fun. You know, let them be a little loose. It's not a game to, to show, like, oh, who's got some talent, who can score, and, and all that. Nine points for the Raiders, all coming for from the three ball. They were about three for 50 from the on the arc so far tonight. And it's 44 to 9, Brockton on top. There's another three, back to back threes for the Raiders. Don't call it a comeback. Double digits for the West Roxbury Raiders. Could they match their season high? Here at Staff Gymnasium. So see, now they're just getting green. Yeah, well, they're, I mean, they're, they got to take some better shot. If you're going to take a three, take a better shot than just throwing it up. You know, it looks like you that one, like this. And that one, too. They're just throwing it up. You got to you gotta mix it up a little bit. You're, you're kind of predictable with your three. And I mean, obviously the later boxers know that their game is just three ball. But, you know, they're up 44 to 12. At this point, it, there's not too much to worry about. Three ball. Warm up the buses. You know, if this was a close game and, and they were draining threes, then yeah, put the pressure on them when they're about to shoot a three. But, you know, they're not putting that much pressure on them because they know they should put up a lot of threes, they're going to miss a lot of threes, and they're going to get the rebound. Bucket.
See, you know, exactly what I was saying. There's no contest for the rebound. You know, Brockton really just knew the three was coming. And they just really just backed off. And they're like, okay, take your shot. over to Layla Dupina. Dupina to Jalen Smith. She'll take the three off the front of the rim. The Raiders grab the rebound. By the sounds, the third quarter has come to an end. A very fast-paced third quarter. Not one whistle or stoppage in play. 46 to 14, your score. Brockton on top over the West Roxbury Raiders. I don't even think it's worth breaking this game down at this point. Well, I could break something down for you. Very simple. The Lady Boxers came out in this start of this uh, half really easing up um, their play. You know, they came out in the first and uh, the first and the second quarters, and they really showed this West Roxbury team that they could steal, that they could really take control of this game. And now it's pretty much cruise mode for the Lady Boxers. And you can you can tell they're just letting West Roxbury take their threes because they know they're going to get the rebound because they miss most of the time. They make a few shots here and there. Um, but most of, the, most of the time they're just letting them take, take their shot and getting the rebound. And, and then, you know, just taking their time running going down court and setting it up and they'd be taking a nonchalant uh, jumper nonchalant free and oh if we get the rebound great we'll just keep passing around waste the clock so that, that's pretty much the game there they're, they're easing up they don't want they don't want to embarrass them too much uh, so that's why the coach it's very respectable, the coach saying, you know, hey, all right, you showed them who you are, you showed them who's boss, but now take your take your foot off the gas pedal a little bit, okay? Still make your shots, but don't don't go overboard. Enough with the stealing, you know. This team, you're way better than this team. You're more developed than these girls. So take it take it down a notch is what I would tell them. Hey. You guys are you guys are better than that. To put it put it simple. On the starting lineup for the boxers tonight has not left the floor. No substitutions. Not surprised. Senior night. You would see subs if this was a closer game. Mix it up a bit. If, if this team, if this Raiders team was, um, was really good. Jill Smith is taping up her fingers, her index and middle fingers on her right hand. So it looks like she jammed one of them or something. Keep an eye on her. 
And if I was Russ Boxberry, I, I, I would, uh, I would change my uh, mascot to something different. I've never known a Raiders team that was actually really good, professional-wise, college-wise. Isn't UMass Dartmouth the Raiders? UMass Dartmouth is the Corsair, similar to a Raider. But more of a pirate. Let's see, you've got the North Quincy Red Raiders. You've got the Oakland Raiders. Vegas Raiders, or whatever you want to call them these days. Not the Vegas Raiders yet. Soon they will be. For now, they're still old. Around here from way downtown, no good. Offensive board. Also, see right now they're they're just throwing up shots. I mean, it's not really a big deal. They miss it or make it. The mascots I would like to see changed, especially pertaining to high school. Attleboro and North Attleboro. They are as follows. Attleboro is the Blue Bombardiers, which when you're trying to call a game, you gotta say Blue Bombardiers. It's very confusing. <laughs> and if it couldn't get worse than that, North Attleboro is the Red Rocketeers. You can only imagine if I had to call a game where they're playing each other, you'd have the Blue Bombardiers, the Red Rocketeers going against each other. Uh, uh, uh. Tongue twisters. Uh. Mix you up. I think that was the first possession by the Raiders where they are actually in the paint and trying to put up a, a little uh, jumper. But uh, we're unsuccessful. But solid F. Solid A for effort. Let's give them our participation award. Could have easily stolen that ball, but eased up, as I was telling you. Fast break, the layup no good, Jalen Smith offensive board. Wise decision to take that ball back out and, and regroup. Another offensive board. And out of play off of West Roxbury. Seamus Clifford in the corner grabbing the loose ball. Part of the Great sports family in Brockton. All of his older brothers playing on the soccer team. One of his, I believe his younger brother was the kicker for the football team. Layup on the putback for West Roxbury. And the Pino lays it up and in 50 to 14 the score Brockton on top. Another steal for Anneli Lorenzo. Just gets it. There's your easy points right there. God save the queen. What an effort. Shot clock's going to be set. An interesting thing in Boston Public Schools coaching is that Coach Hugh Coleman of Brighton back-to-back -back state champions with Brighton versus the Bengals. Always one of the better matchup against the Rockford Boxers. One we always look forward to. Jump ship, he went to Charlestown. And 
supposed to turn around that program and is doing a phenomenal job so far. So Charlestown will be coming to Staff Gymnasium next season to face the boxer men's team. Hugh Coleman, one of the most animated coaches you will ever see. When you think about the rise and fall of Madison Park, as a school and as an athletic program. I think this is the first time that West Roxbury is going to go to the line for two. See how well they uh, try to do these foul shots. <laughs> 0 for 1 on the night of the West Roxbury Raiders. One of two. 54 to 17 the score. Uh, we got a bounce off of the Raiders. Taylor Smith has it knocked out. Layla Lupino. Now over to Annalie Lorenzo. See, uh, I'd have to say the most active player for West Roxbury is number 14. And, I mean, she should be doing more. I mean, she, she tries to get in the paint, and I think she's the only one on that West Roxbury team who has the guts, the confidence to, to try to get yeah, some height advantage over these uh, boxers. You know, and I think she could easily do it, but uh, I don't, she just she lacks some confidence. Lorenzo, terrible angle, underhanded shot, and that falls. Sort of the game, everything's falling for the boxers. Boxers now up by 41 points, easily the largest active lead of the season. I feel like, I feel like number 14 could be. She, she could be real dominant player, but I just don't think she, she the effort's there for them. That's the buzzer sounds. This one has come to an end. A huge victory for the boxers here on senior night. 58 to 17 the score, and Rodney standing courtside. Loves Emotions it. Uh, loves it. That's all you need to know. He loves it. Jubilation and Staff Gymnasium as the boxers celebrate a senior day win. Alex, your final thoughts on today's effort? What, what are you going to say? It's total domination by the lady boxers. I mean, you have a team that came in here that's, you know, to came in. They're totally uncontested against them. Well, that'll do it from Staff Gymnasium for today's broadcast. 58-17 to the final score. Brockton getting the victory over West Roxbury here on Senior Day for everyone here at Brockton Community Access. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. We'll see you next game.